It's always a challenge when approaching the creation of a new game. There is pressure to do something different, to lead the way, to deliver even better characters, environments and stories. Over the years with Tomb Raider, each adventure has broken new ground and taken the player to even more exotic locations and arenas. And now onto a new arena, the next generation console. Our vision is, is to take the player somewhere dark, a place they might not necessarily wish to go, but a place that they'll have to venture if they want to bring Lara back. This world is from the imagination, but based in reality. A dark world, a dangerous world, a world that reflects the change in Lara. It will be a new experience, one that will almost be shocking to people who have played Tomb Raider in the past. From the catacombs of the Louvre to the alleys of Prague, we searched for the seedier side of life. A world that you wouldn't normally see Lara in, but a world that she has no choice but to inhabit. Like her audience, like the game's consoles themselves, Lara has grown up. Her experiences in Tomb Raider 4 have forced her to question herself. This game will ask more questions of her. It was a very conscious decision to leave out elements of Lara's story since Tomb Raider 4. Certain aspects of that story will return. It's just a matter of when and where. For the first time, Lara will have a moral choice to make. It's no longer a clear-cut case of good versus evil. This is a more complex tale which will ask more complex questions of the player. The player controls how the story develops much more than in previous Tomb Raiders. Basically, when Lara talks to a character, the player can also choose whether Lara is nice, nasty, or dismissive to another character. This game sets a new benchmark for character animation. The new consoles allow for an unprecedented level of subtlety in the way the characters can act. Some characters may betray more than their feelings. In this world, the player should look as well as listen. The advancements in game technology allow for much more complex movement from the characters. They have spines, joints, they even have fingers. They move in different ways. We borrow these movements from real people. The man on the A57, the woman on the bus. They travel much further than they think. The player will choose which path to take, which characters to trust, which lies to believe, and which enemy to face. Some enemies may become allies. Some enemies may become something far worse. Certain enemies have taken years of conception, gestating through design and redesign. I am the first to see them born, the first to guide them through the early stages, their first steps, their first kills, until they are finally unleashed upon the world. When you walk into this world, you walk into a film. A film with multiple paths and possibilities, but one story drawing you through. This world begins in an act of darkness. How this world ends is up to you. This is a world of shadows. There is a shadow on Lara. He watches, waits, he bides his time. His name is Curtis. He wants revenge. And Lara will help him extract that revenge. For the first time, there is another playable character in Tomb Raider. A character whose abilities combine the supernatural with the superhuman. He has a different approach to Lara, less subtle perhaps, but still effective against certain opponents. It's a much more intelligent game for the enemies as well as Lara. The PlayStation 2 has got much more power to process enemies doing much more complicated things. The enemies in the game have evolved. They will work together. Notice when another enemy is killed and react accordingly. These enemies will pursue Lara. They will not stop. 
they have not stopped in 600 years. The Monstrum, the Cabal, Eckhart, an unholy trinity guided by an unspeakable force. Their origins lie in the annals of alchemy, not in its purported search for the secrets of gold, but in its real search for the secrets of the atom. If you control the atom, you can control life. You can create life, and you can steal life from others. This story is very much on an epic scale, from 14th century alchemists to serial killers in modern day France. To create something on this scale, it was necessary to take the ideas and production values from the film industry in the way they research the subjects, the backstory they create for their characters and the depth of the visuals. This level of production requires a total consistency of purpose. Every aspect of the game has to be in keeping with the overall concept. Every person working on the game knows that they are working on an epic and everything they do has to reflect that from concept to completion. For the music to match the scale of the production, we decided to use the same process that major film studios use. In this case, the London Symphony Orchestra. It's an overwhelming thought having your music played by 84 of the world's top musicians. But the effect of the music when playing Angel of Darkness will be well worth the shredding of our nerves. On the day of the recording, we are in the good hands of Abbey Road Studios and David Snell, the conductor. In a sense, he visualizes the music and translates it to the ears. We want the music to be ever-present, draw you into the world without you noticing. Part of the style of this game is that all the elements work together, bide their time, wait for the moments when they are needed. At core, we had a very clear vision of where we wanted to go. We wanted to take the Laura we all knew and put it into a game, a situation that no one knows. Tomb Raider has always set the benchmark for games. This game will be no different. Some may see elements of various filmmakers, such as Luke Besson and David Fincher. Some may see elements of various artists, Grunwald, Bosch, all will see something they haven't seen before. When we wrote this story, we wrote a book. This game is only the first few chapters of that book. This game opens a lot of doors and only closes a few of them.